think we are live. Thank God. Hi, Pam. Good to see you. New to Zoom, figuring it out. Okay, well, Lori, it's a brave new world for all of us. Um, Texas Children's Museum, nice. Thanks, Vada, for coming. Um, so we are live. So I'm. Uh, my name is Blake Cabot. I am the owner of facepaint.com. And we have got somebody I've gotten to know pretty well over the last couple months, um, Bianca Hanna. And she is, um, you know, if it wasn't for floods, this woman's life would be easy. Um, but she gets flooded in Oklahoma all the time. So usually when I tried to get Bianca on, she said, I'd love to, but my house is flooded. And then I'd call her back in a couple months and she'd say, yeah, but I'd love to, but my house is flooded. So this is a dry moment in Oklahoma. So this is what it takes to get a dry moment in Oklahoma. And Bianca will do the rest of the introduction. All right, can you hear me all right? okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Wonderful. Okay, my name is Bianca Hanna. I'm, I'm living, I live in Oklahoma, like Blake already said, and thank you for having me and thank you for joining the webinar with me. Yeah, about myself, I originally come from Germany. That's that funny accent you're going to be hearing. And so please bear with me. I hope you like it anyways. Uh, I do not so much, but I'm working on it. And uh, if I say something funny, um, just let me know or if you don't understand me. Um, I've been face painting for many years. I've been an artist for many years. I studied art originally. Uh, I, I, I have a degree and, and uh, graduated in 2003. And uh, the face painting though was totally by accident. I was um, volunteering for the German Red Cross. And one day I was volunteered to do face painting. And I don't know, when once you start, you get hooked, obviously. So this was that uh, quick thing. Um, in my private life, before I was a face painter, while I was still in Germany, I was, um, I have actually a medical, medical background. I was in a pharmacy for many years. I have a pharmaceutical degree. I learned how to produce medication, work in a, I was working in a lab, uh, working in a pharmacy. I did all kinds of stuff. And um, I also was volunteering uh, like as a paramedic for like like I already said for the German Red Cross so I did a lot of medical um, stuff and I enjoyed it a lot however when I moved to the states in 2010 uh, all this as nothing of that was kind of um, accepted and I they wanted me to start from scratch and so I thought well you know what um, let's pick up that face painting again and be a face painter, right? Because uh, my art study, there's nothing that, that, that can be taken away. So anyways, I did all, had to start from scratch, do research and um, all that to, um, to learn about the brands that I used here and everything. And so in 2011, I did it as a profession here. And um, I'm doing... Or, or kind of like most of you and most a lot of you know me already you can see me at conventions i teach workshops uh, i have a faba tv class on um, a new one is coming up soon so stay tuned for that and um yeah so uh, with all this medical background and the painting experience and my german sense of everything has to be right i hope you trust me with giving that class about um, yeah, things that are important to know. You know, face painting is not a profession that you can or have to learn in college classes. And it's a matter of fact, when I started in 2005 somewhere, uh, there wasn't even a lot of inspiration to be found on, on Facebook, at, uh, on, on the internet any, anyways. And uh, Facebook was uh, about to start and grow. And now they have face painting groups and a lot of help there. But still, at the end of the day, most of you just uh, try to figure out what's best for themselves. And um, it's hard to have that. They are generally not really um, applicable. Applicable? Did I say that right? Is that a word? <laughs> Guidel <laughs> right. Uh, are guidelines that to follow. And um, so what I'm doing today, I just want out of my experience, out of my research, and uh, trust me, I did a lot of uh, research and uh, um, I was really bugging companies and, and all kinds just to get uh, information that, that is clear and, and that help you. How do I do things best? How do I do things right? And um, 
this is what I want to share with you today. And I hope you trust me with this. Um, with yeah, me, me <laughs> you trust me with, with me being a fitting person. That makes I do. Sense. I do. Thank you, Blake. Thank you, Blake. So uh, I want to get right into it because I have a lot of information for you to share. It's kind of for everybody, even if you are an um, experienced face painter. I, I'm sure there is one or two things that you can uh, pick up today and learn. And if you are a beginner, please note, make, yeah, watch the video, rewatch it, take notes. And um, um, yeah, I hope it helps you and you can learn something. So I'm going to start uh, right So we away. got a couple of people. We got people from all over the place. So we got people from Italy. We got people from Mississippi, oh, wow. Texas. Um, and they're calling you the flower queen. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, I'm very famous for the color lilies. Um, I was the, the the original face painter actually starting these. Um, it was it was many years ago, and it was at an at an event. And, and I don't know, I just did it, and it was kind of a good method to. It worked out. Uh, immediately, people were asking me how you do that and all that. And so this is how I worked on more and more, and how uh, it, it grew over the time, and. Um, yeah, so yeah, color lily queen, flower queen. I like actually all kinds of flowers. I tell you a secret, I love roses almost more than color lilies. <laughs> I like bubbles. I like those. so, anyways. Um, well, thank you everybody for joining in. Hello, hello. And I hope you can understand me well. So, I want to get uh, straight in and start uh, with talking about paints itself. Paints is what we use, and that's important to know about paints. The things about it, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at paints, I have here a, a container. Can you switch to that other camera real quick? Sure. Okay. Okay. So I have here a little container. It's a Chris container. And if you look at it, there is a um, little symbol here. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Or should I get closer? Okay. There's a little symbol here with a number inside. And here it says um, 18. 12, 12 months. And uh, this um, is a very important information. What that means is as soon as you open that paint and use it, from that moment, it's 12 months, uh, how long you should use it. This is like a kind of an expiration date, what you start with that. So actually, if you start using these paints, you should go ahead and write like a little um, date or something on your container so you know when you started using it and i am pretty sure that very few do that but it is actually a, an important thing to do also when you repot your paints or when you make your own split cakes you should write down um the information when you when you started when you did it what kind of paints are in that split cake and um keep track of that and it helps you for future, um, if you want to order stuff, it, it will help you to realize how, or learn how long did that cake last, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So it really helps. It, it, it's professional and it's clean. You want to work clean and professional as a face painter and not paint with 10 year old paints. So this is um, something that I just wanted to give on the way because I think it's like quite an important thing. Let's talk about repotting for a moment. I think we're good and you can switch the camera again. Let's talk about repotting. Um, why do we repot? Not everybody does repot, but a lot of you do. And this is something I wanted to address. Um, so there are several reasons why I, I'm one of the people repotting and um, there are several reasons why do I do it? But first is I wanna make my paints fit. They don't always fit how I need them. And sometimes you have to work small. And I want to show you, this is my travel case. And there is no way I can fit like all these big round containers and every single paint in, in this little, little itty bitty case. And with that case, I, I go to conventions or went to conventions. I went to Fava TV. I went to Capital Convention. I went to Europe for a workshop tour with that little case. And it really worked out great. But I had to repot and fit the paints the way I need it. Otherwise, uh, there is no way to get it in. And um, let me let me show you. This case is right now not really used, but I'm working on a different one that's a tiny little bit uh, bigger. And this is um, how I use it. And, and um, yeah, I wanted to show you my reported things. Yeah. Let me 
And yeah, before we switch the cameras again, I wanted to share a quick trick what I do with my magnets um, because I thought that's pretty neat. So I have my magnets. A lot of them are, um, are did you switch the cameras? I did. Oh, okay. Um, and let me get that down real quick. So this is like one of my magnets, um, magnetized uh, stencils. And uh, here's my magnet and yeah, I put it on there and then I mark one side, I leave black and the other side I mark white by just using this kind of tape and put it on there. And, the re and they are all in the same direction. So all, uh, so this will not fit, but this will fit, right? And uh, this is like a helpful, so it, it gives you like a little bit of an idea how to use them always the same side, for example, and you always set it at the same, um, in the same side uh, into your kit. And you don't have to try, does it fit or not? It saves you time. It is actually very helpful and pretty neat um, that I wanted to share that real quick. So that was like- One question came in, what kind of, uh, Christy asked, what kind of case is it? That little case, um, Oh, that's an interesting question. What case was it? Well, that tiny little case, what I showed first, that was uh, from eBay and it was under 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. And it was really just an alumi aluminum case. It's three inches high and about um, nine, oh, well, something with nine, 14 inches wide, I think. And uh, this was uh, like under 20 bucks. In this case, what I, I'm, I'm just switching to a touch bigger case. And this was, I believe, a case that contained grill material. You know, this grilling stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, it was uh, from eBay as well. And I bought that and I like the size a lot because it's flat. It fits in my travel. It fits in my um, carry on when I'm on an airplane. So it's like really useful for me. And I, I like it that way. And, 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 um, and did you use magnetic tape on the, um, the stencils or did you use a thin no, magnet? Um, for the stencils I have, let me see if you can see it. Here's the, you, do you see that shape here? This is actually a magnet that shines through a little bit. If you can move it a little bit up, because um, I can't, you need to, it's at the bottom of it. The, yeah, there we are. There we go. Okay, fine. Okay, so it's actually a regular magnet, and I make sure that I order them as strong, um, not, they are like N50. This, they come with an N50 uh, thing, and I make sure that they are strong because you want the weight, you want them to hold, and it comes, it adds weight, right, and you want it don't to stay on the case uh, how you need it. And yeah, and then I just uh, use the tape, go around, and then I just mark the one side after I went around to make sure that it doesn't come off. And uh, I mark it with that white tape. And this is just electrical tape, what you can buy in a, at Lowe's mm -hmm. or wherever. Okay. And this is really neat to do that. And that magnetizing, I know a lot of people do that. And it is very helpful because you can uh, set up something uh, where you can show your magnets or put up your magnets how you need it. And it helps uh, when you're on the job. So let's go to that. Um, this is something I, I did. Um, oh, here's, here's actually a better one. This is um, how I report. See that? So this is like all reported. And I've been using that for quite a while. You see the, the paint is... Uh, um, pretty used, right? And um, this is really, I mean, this is a lot of pain in one little spot. So that's just one reason why I repot. That's, so nice, uh, that's a really cool palette uh, from someone who appreciates a good palette. That's a great palette. By the way, I have good news. Look, it's about the same size as what the craze pellets are. There you go. Although you Isn't have more that... white and red and black. I like the way you did that. That was great. Right? Yeah. Well, this is this I had before this came out, so I'm using both. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, so I have this, I have here uh, solid colors, and I write down exactly what it is. And when I report that, it's the same. So I have a date on when I did it, so I know when I've uh, potted the things or we potted them, and, and um, write everything down. And I think it's very important to do so you can really track, keep track what you have in if you want to redo a cake and you don't know oh my god what what green did i use what yellow did i use so it's really helpful when you know exactly what you have in there so this is the idea of that that whole thing 
Um, and I know that a lot of people report, and that's why I, it was really important to me to give a few hints and information about it. So um, I can use containers that I like. Oh, by the way, I'm going to show real quick. I also love I. Uh, love these craze containers. They are stackable, and I write here as well what I have in there. Mm -hmm. And so, I, so this itty bitty thing compared to the bigger cakes, like here, well, it, not that much, but it, you can really get a lot of paint in there, and you can stack them. And then it's like mm -hmm. th th that really take that really saves a lot of space. That's why I, I love these and why I use them. So I wanted to mention that and. Um, yeah, um, I can use containers that I like. That's what I just showed. And I also, what's one reason why I like using that? Let me get back to this palette. For example, um, this is a Diamond FX White, and this is a Global Blue. I like using different brands sometimes, not always, but sometimes it makes really sense to do so. Mm -hmm. That white, is like Diamond FX or Craze or uh, Chameleon, they, they are like, Wax um, based, glycerin wax, no wax based. <laughs> and this is um, Acacia Seagull, see whatever it's called, gum uh, glycerin base. So mm -hmm. these are different bases and they don't, it, it takes a little bit more effort for them to mix. And sometimes I use that to my advantage when I want that. I want a contrast when I want that white to stay white, and then I use that for my um, for that purpose. Like when I do, and not like you always said, uh, already said, I am like the flower queen. I do florals a lot, and all my florals have these. Um, um, how can I say the 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 that white highlight on the edge of the petal, right? Right. Uh, I mean, that I get contrast much better when I use like here this is global paints but I replace that global white with a um, diamond FX right mm -hmm. and uh, this is the the point of that so I get that bigger contrast mm -hmm. and that's why I do it another thing is when you when you use um, when you do double tip flowers it's the same the same idea when you use double dip flowers I like to use a wax based uh, white let me get that here. Oh, I went in my black accidentally. That was not meant to be. I'm not multitasking, obviously. And um, don't worry. I'm and that not even at the same time. <laughs> okay. So what I'm doing now, I take that diamond of X white here, and um, I activated that um, blue. Then just dip that off a little bit and pick that blue up, and you get really. Let me get a bit more and you get a good contrast and it doesn't mix too easily because I don't want it to run too much in each other, right? And then I just, see, when you when you do that, you get really nice, um, that, that white stays white and that's what I try to um, achieve here. So this is the idea why I do that. All right, then let's go. Um, yeah, so the different properties uh, are very useful. You, oh, awesome, all right. So um, I was always concerned about, can I report and do I lose my insurance coverage when I do that? And I have, uh, what I just did, I, I asked my insurance, tell them, hey, I'm reporting my pains, to make them fit in my case. Do I lose my coverage? And they immediately answered me, no, you don't, you are a covered girl. And I'm like, wow, that's awesome. That's good news to hear. So it doesn't make me nervous anymore. And it, sometimes it really is uh, needed. For my purpose, I really like to report once in a while, not everything, uh, mm -hmm. because it's a lot of work to do. But um, I know I know a lot of you do. At, at conventions, everybody has a travel kit. It's all minimized. So it's uh, not a bad thing to know these things. So yes, you are covered if you do report. And I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, let me talk about reporting. Uh, reporting um, anyways a little more when you report when I report I try to work as clean as possible I mean really clean I sanitize the whole working area um, wear gloves sanitize my hands wear gloves wash my hands wash them anyways even if you wear gloves and um, try really to work as clean as possible. And the thing is, because I was working in a lab and I used to actually produce medications and produce 
creams and all kinds of stuff like doctors recipes put together. Um, we had to work really clean and had to track everything. So every component was what we put into a cream. Everything was trackable, where it was, where we ordered it, or anything. Like, like really, really, uh, you could really check everything. It was, it was wonderful. Patch numbers, everything was on there. And this is a good thing. And in the pharmacy, it's, it's important if something happens that you can track things down, right? I don't want to uh, go... Um, a question started. came in, Bianca. Um, yes. How soft is the craze paint? It's a wax-based paint, um, so it's pretty similar to a diamond or tag. But she asked, she found uh, Maron Paradise easier to repot because that's a glycerin-based paint. Any tricks right. on potting harder paints like global or 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 any of the wax based paints? But global is more is actually more glycerin based as well. Really? Um, and even in if you have the I same medium, even have even if you have the same medium, you can still have big differences. Uh, like Tap and Superstar, they are also glycerin based, and yet they are super soft. I was always under the impression they are wax. Based, no, super superstar is glycerin based. Tag is wax. I'm pretty sure. Right, tag and diamond FX and craze is wax based, like mm -hmm. this. Um, yeah, and this this makes it creamier. If that makes any sense. Sure. And um, but in terms of repotting, them, how how hard is it to repot, or how do you repot the 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 wax based ones? I just cut them, and I use a clean spatula for that. And uh, just or you can use a knife, whatever you like working with, and just cut out uh, the shape I want from the regular, uh, you know, co color container, and cut out the shape I want and put them into my container in my desired container. I'm going to get to that point uh, okay. in the second days, and sure. it's really easy to cut. There are brands that are hard to cut, uh, especially when they are not brand new. Like global paints are a little harder to cut, and. Um, Others are super good to cut, like the fab paints are my favorite to report because they are super easy. You just glide superstar. through. Right. I mean, they're just, they're, they are yes. superstars. Yes. Right. And you have that shape. Um, so a Diamond FX and Craze is like a little bit in between. It's actually still nice to cut, and it's but it's a little bit more solid, not too creamy. So it stays in a shape that you cut it. So it's actually not a bad. It's good. In, in, I like it when you when you can cut a shape and it stays in that right. So um, yeah, I cut. Uh, Elaine shape. writes, uh, "Neons are the worst um, to do that." Uh, I think that's probably true. Probably yes. the repot. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, but tag neons, for example, I like actually. They mm -hmm. are they are. Not so when I um, make a, yeah, let's say I make a, a, a rainbow cake, right? So I cut my uh, stripes, put them into the container. Let me just get one of these. Put them into a container. Yeah, let's switch real quick to the cameras again. Okay. And I put it in and uh, let's just imagine I just done that. So I put in that and that and that and that, right? And when it's in there, then it's, and this is really important, please do that when you, when you repot your paints, even when you just put a single color in, you should always take um, um, like a wipe or um, this is like a paper towel or when it's a little sticky like the, the global paints, I use probably a baby wipe or something and then just press it down, press the whole area down as good as you can. And when you take it off, I mean, this doesn't do any, a lot because it's already pressed in. But if it was a fresh paint and I just would have put it in, you can actually see the, the you know, the pattern of that uh, wipe or paper towel. And it's like evenly um, pressed in. And the reason is it's really important to do that. The reason why you should uh, press that down, you don't want to have any gaps in there and you don't want the water disappear in these gaps and then work the, the way into the paints. Cause um, first of all, the paints can get gooey. Then secondly, the paints uh, get, um, the pigments can get picked up and the cut, the neighbor paints can bleed into each other. Um, I had seen a brand new cakes and um, like if they got too moist at some point, they, um, they bled, you know, you know, they, I mean, here it's not the case. So this, this was never too moist. Here you have a sharp line, right? But sometimes you see a little bit of an 
how do you call it? You know, uh, like 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 the, the pigments were bleeding a little bit into the partner paint and you don't you don't want to do that so you try to avoid that and so this is one reason why you have to press it in as good as you can because you don't want that water to work on your paints now let's talk about the paints a little more the paints uh, itself they have um when they are like brand new like this uh, i've never used that so they have an anti microbial bile <laughs> micro microbial bile, mm -hmm. whatever you know what I mean? Structure, yeah. right? So this structure um, is like a self-protection. It, it is uh, germophobic, if you want to call it like that. And it's a good thing. We want it that way, right? So when you use these paints and you use too much water on it, this water breaks up this uh, germophobic uh, uh, structure and uh, the paint is not uh, loses this ability to fight uh, germs, right? We don't want that to happen. So um, try to work with as little water as possible. Don't ever spray on your paints, spray on your sponges. Mark my word for that. It took me quite a while to actually uh, get used to that part and uh, do that. Um, then uh, it also, when, 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 when that happens, when you have the paint, um, yeah, like having too too much exposure to to water and whatnot also time like time and water is is uh, like are the big enemies so the paint gets like really craggy when it, and hard and i'm pretty sure most of you have experienced that at some point somewhere so uh, we don't want that to happen and then it's a really old paint it even gets it fades a little bit it gets dull and um um, then it's then it's time to just uh, switch out the paint into a new paint, uh, to be honest. So, um, yeah, don't use a lot of um, water, don't spritz on it. It took me really quite a while to get used to that, um, not to spritz on my paints, but it's really, it became a habit, so I'm spritzing on my sponges instead. And then you have the brush, make always sure that you give it a good swipe on your container. Um, I guess you are. How do you, uh, how do you fix crack paint? Um. Um, you don't really fix it. When, uh, like here, for example, this here is, is never been used and yet it has a little crack because it was uh, storage dry. That does not mean that the structure is destroyed. It just could use probably a little moisture, right? So mm -hmm. it's in the moment when I start using this paint, it will disappear because it's really mini, it's, it's very, very little, right? So if you have an old container, or like really old, a bit cracked paints, and I, I don't really own anyone like this, like right now to show you, but you can probably imagine, you know, these really, really old containers. It's hard to fix it. I mean, you can do that. You can add um, a mixture of, depending on kind of what uh, base you have. If you have that, are you on that camera right now? I'm on the, uh, I'm on the, the board. The other one, on the board. Okay. Um, if you have, um, I don't know if I can show that, but anyway, you can take that ca that that uh, container. You can use a sp you can take a spray bottle, use it, uh, fill it with water, and I'm talking about super clean water. I'm going to get to that later, and a little bit of glycerin. You can buy that in, in stores, and then give it a spray, set the container back on, and let it sit a while, and then it it you know, it, it gives the needed moisture. So the, the paint needs a touch of moisture, but not too much. You don't want really have excess water running around and, and work on the paint and break down that structure, if that makes any sense. So this would be something what you can do, use a spray uh, with a mixture of water, probably two thirds of water and one third of glycerin or less glycerin probably. And just give it just a little spray and let it sit. If it needs more, let it sit another day with that spray on and the lid closed and you can um, re-moisture the paint if you have to do that. So that would be a solution for that. So let's go to water, um, when, water when you use water. So let, when I was working in the um, pharmacy and uh, we had to do creams and stuff like that, I really, <laughs> we had to use water, distilled water and cook it, like boil it for one minute to make sure that all the germs were illuminated, right? And 
we, we wanted as little germs, as little, as little uh, bacteria as, as possible to get into the cream and uh, help the growth over the time of the bacteria into the cream. So we want to work clean. And um, when you use water, use distilled water. The distilled water that you buy in a store is actually heated up before it's getting filled. So it has uh, no germs when it's getting filled. And it stays actually pretty stable that way for quite a while. Then you open the water and the air uh, gets on. Yes, then sometimes it can, uh, it starts growing. And after a while, after when you have this water sitting there for two weeks and you want to drink it, you can drink it, by the way. I actually made, I did really a ton of research and all that. Uh, but it will be probably a little uh, bowl tasting. And yes, there are germs inside, uh, but it's usually so, in, what the body can handle when it's getting, when, the, when it's really tasting bad and you see stuff in there, then don't drink it, of course, right? And you never know what kind of germs go in there. And the most um, source of germs when you drink out of a bottle, for example, is your own mouth. Other than that, it's from the air, but it's not that much of germs what gets into. However, when that water sits there a while, and it's warm and, and probably bright and sun and whatnot, then these germs can really grow very fast. And I, I mean like <laughs> really fast and uh, you have quite some germs in, in that water. So when you fill your spray bottles that you use for, for your gig, um, do we have this camera or this camera right now? Both. Both, okay. So when you use uh, the, let me see, do you see it? I see everything. Uh, you do that. <laughs> so when you have um, the, the, your spray uh, bottle, and then make sure this is filled with fresh water, like filtered water with uh, like um, medical charcoal filled water. You have uh, filters, they do that. Uh, and you can also boil your water to make get rid of the germs or you fill in distilled water, fresh distilled water. And then it's like really great because I mean, you still spray on the sponge, you work with it. You don't want not necessarily uh, like whatever you can avoid to get into your pains or into your pain system. You want to, you want to try to avoid that. So this is my recommendation. Well, if you don't have any, then take tap water or something. But if you're at a gig, please fill that bottle with fresh water to make sure that it's halfway clean, if that makes any sense. So I have actually marked this with distilled water because that's exactly what is in there. And if you want to reuse it and don't have any new distilled water on, you really can just boil it again and get rid of all the germs. The distilled water does not have minerals either. This is a good thing. You don't want to have extra minerals getting in your paint, if that makes any sense. So this is really um, a good idea to do that. So let me put that back over here. So what's next on my list? Um, uh, one question came up. Uh, what are the containers you repot your paints into? Require for what? What, what, where, what containers do you repot the paints into? Yeah, all kind of. Like, uh, I use these great craze containers. Yeah, I'll get you a link, um, Shelly, for the craze right. containers. Uh, I use these craze containers and uh, repot and write in the back exactly what's in there. So I know that. And it has a date when I did it. And this is uh, really good to keep track. And this is a fishing box I got from eBay. It's called Slim Fishing Box. And it's um, like, uh, this is actually kind of a, a foam. This bothers me a little bit. I would rather have plastic. However, the good thing, what I did here, I cut that one part out and made a big white out of it. So, uh, because white is what I need the most. And so I have that white um, in a bigger uh, size available. So this is why I, I do that. And a lot of you use this, this um, jewelry display, you know, <laughs> with, with the squares. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I know uh, I really love to do that. So that's why I really wanted to mention that reporting issue. And I want to make sure when you do that, please work clean, work um, careful, write down what you put in and uh, pay attention to this. Remember that date that's that's on there with that little icon uh, and write down the date when you start using it. So that should really help. To Barbara thinks things. that's a great tip about boiling water. Yes, works. We had to actually boil it for one minute to make sure that 
99.99999% uh, of germs were gone. And uh, that was, I mean, yeah, when you buy, when you get a cream from the pharmacy, you want to make sure that it's clean, right? And the pharmacists, they want to provide, provide the clean work and clean paint. And I think that's, that's why, why not pick that up for our profession? We want to work clean too and want, and want to appear professional and want to be able with, to say to the, to the client with a good conscience, hey, I work clean. I work really good and um, you don't have to worry about anything, right? If that makes any sense. Okay, um, then um, yeah, prevent to, to spray on the sponges and give the brush a good swipe. Oh yeah, brush. I want, I want to mention that and we need to switch the camera again. I want to mention when you, for, it's because it's really, this is one of these items uh, that is a game changer if, when you use them. So this is, I hope you can see that. Yeah. Can you see that? Yes. Is it, uh, although is if it, you move it up a little bit, a bit better. Yeah. Like okay, this? Great. Yeah. All great. right. So this is called a rinse veil. Uh, I think it's by Leuve Cornell. So this is one of these items I never had, but once I had it, I was like, how could I ever paint it without it? And the customers, they, I get always wows when I use it. And I really want to show real quick how it works because I get asked, uh, what is it? How does it work? And it took me a minute to understand that too. My friend Esther introduced it to me like two years ago and I was like, I need to have that. So what it, So you fill your water in that container, right? See, put it up there and then you have your water here and you work and stuff and, do, and, and, and whatever you need to do. Once that water you don't use anymore, you just press the button and guess what? It disappears right underneath and the fresh water automatically fills up again. And this is just wonderful. The, comp the client sees that they are like, oh, wow, that's amazing. And they produce in their, they, they memorize as how she works professional. He or she is, is works clean. Yeah, and that, that's a positive um, memory, little memory what the client uh, takes with him. And that's what we want to have, right? We want to have, we want to appear professional and be in a good memory. So that's why it was important to me to mention that to you. And um, um, yeah, so that's about the water. Use the distilled water, boil it. The rinseville is really a wonderful item. Use always fresh water. So this is the things about water, what I wanted to mention. So I take that away again and we can switch cameras again. Okay. So there's one thing I want to talk about is uh, about pains. Uh, I don't know if a, a lot of you know that or not. The, a lot of paints come with a warning, don't use blue on the lips and don't use red around the eyes. There are most of, most brands actually do. And uh, then the question is like for me, when I heard that I was like, oh, okay, so can I not use, uh, can I not paint my Spider-Man anymore or my Frozen Princess? So uh, I was really doing a lot of research and mark my word, it was not easy to get a solid information about that. Uh, I asked other artists, I asked uh, face paint store suppliers, I asked, um, um, you know, like <laughs> different companies and um, they, they all were like, mm, maybe because it stains, I don't know, right? And I also wrote to the FDA because the FDA was, was like, we don't recommend that. So I wrote to the FDA and was really bugging them. And guess what? One hour before I got on the phone with Blake, I got an answer from them. So I was like, wow, amazing. What's so the I, got answer? The answer, I got the answer from the FDA. The reason is because of staining. Yeah, that's the thing. So it might stain and mm. uh, it's, it's pigments and they might stain. It's not that they necessarily do, but they might. So this is the reason, uh, well, it helps me actually a lot. I, so I can paint my Spider-Man. I don't have to worry about health issues or whatnot because it was sounding scary. Don't use that blue, don't use that red. Okay, that's interesting. And, and I'm like, uh, okay, so that scares me. Can I do it or not? Yes, I can. Yes, you can. Just, okay, don't probably paint a girl that wants to take 
uh, participate in a pageant tomorrow. So uh, to make sure that there are no stained eyes or something. I never had that problem. Uh, most of the artists I ask, guess what they repl re re reply to me? They say like, oh, the whole world does it. Nobody has a problem. Right? And I'm one of them and I can just second that. So, um, but I wanted to ask the- One, one question came in. Um, Ashley asked, when you transport the rinse well, how do you, uh, if, if, how do you transport it? Excellent. Thank you for the question. So I showed you my my mini kit, yeah, this this small kit, and I actually use use that for work a lot. That does not mean that I don't come with um, sufficient supplies. Um, what I also have, I have this tote. You, you I, I, every one of you has seen that. That Michaels has that. Hobby Lobby has it. It's like a tote with wheels and a handle. It's like pretty good size. So I take that with me as well. And in the tote, there are paper towels, um, wipes, alcohol, first aid kit, uh, my rinse well. There are whatever I need, extra sponges. There's, there's everything what I need, my boards, all the big stuff that is in the tote. And when I'm at the client's house, so it's under the table and I have on the, on the table itself, I have my rather small kit and it's, it's not so big you know not so oh yeah take a lot of yeah you I can you can adjust to almost any work condition with that smaller um case if that makes any sense but also i use i use a the, this jewelry display um table it's a folding table with a lid and so a lot of face painters use it as their kid they they filled it and use it it has legs and stuff mm -hmm. and i was okay but sometimes i still can't use it because i have not enough room or whatever uh, or in my restaurant gigs i they want me to work from the table so i cannot use it so what i do i use that folding table as a table that's what I do. So I, I magnetize the whole wall. I can put all my stencils and glitters and whatever I have magnetized on the lid, on the inside. On the outside of the lid, I can put boards and whatnot. And I'm, other than that, I take my little case, what I showed you earlier, put it on there and I paint. And I have my rinse well sitting there, water brush, uh, like brush holders and whatnot. So this is like uh, really a great system. Maybe I'll make a video about that case, that case just for uh, inspiration one, one day. Okay. Um, yeah, then let me talk about neon paints too. So neon paints have the label, most of them do, uh, special FX paint, don't, don't use for, not use for cosmetic and um, whatnot. It's, it's like sounds scary, like that blue and, and um, red uh, earlier as well. So I asked the FDA about that as well. And um, the FDA gave me the answer that the reason is, well, literally what I assume because it hasn't been tested. So what has to happen? The manufacturer has to send samples to them and every single thing has to get tested and so on and so on. It's a long process and probably a very expensive process. And I can't imagine that this might be a reason why uh, a lot of the paints aren't tested yet. However, I have great news. I asked my insurance about that as well. So, but I met with Body Works and Body Works um, also told me about neon paints. Yes, girl, you can take neon paints. You are covered. And this is wonderful. I think that's wonderful news because so many K cakes they contain neon paints they are vibrant the kids love it and i like using that I, I also offer uv parties and stuff so i want to use it and i can this is what i what was important to me and i covered can i use it and honestly i've been using that for many years and i never had problems so this is the reason why however if you are not with body works you have to check with your own insurance and see if they uh, cover that as well so um, let's talk about brushes real quick. Brushes, um, you know, you, most of you know you should you should not just just leave them in a water container, right? Anything that like when um, liquid penetrate like is long exposed to this uh, area here, it will penetrate into that furrow and it will um, soak in the unvanished part and probably destroy the glue what holds the bristle. So you don't want to soak it in, in water too long. So And you also shouldn't, shouldn't storage after cleaning, you shouldn't storage the brushes uh, like that. You should actually lay them down on a dry towel or whatever and let them dry out. 
And this is not always easy to do, but with my case, so I have the brushes always in the lid like this way, but when I'm done painting, so I clean my brushes after the gig, when I'm done painting, I close the lid and the case lays in my car, so they're actually really storage like that. So this is like um, a good way to do it and you should um, never really let them sit when they are wet to avoid that water getting in there and doing all that, what I just mentioned. So sponges, I want to talk about sponges too. Um, how do you clean your sponges? Um, <laughs> I tell you, this is a lot of discussion here. <laughs> but So very quickly, um, I recommend take the sponges, take special soap, there is like the brush best by Silly Farm available, or uh, this artist soap by Chameleon, Superstar, whatnot. They, they're special artist soap. They are made to pick up the pigments really good, and they do. And um, that brush uh, soap has uh, antimicrobial um, abilities as well. Also the soap, actually, a lot of soaps break down the structure of viruses and, and um, bacteria easily and, and kill mo the most. And, and so we are actually pretty good on the side. If you want to really, really clean or more clean, take antimicrobial liquid soap as well that works or, or use alcohol, like 70% alcohol tea to clean them. Uh, real quick of that alcohol, when you use alcohol um, to spray down uh, surfaces on your kit, for example, it happened to me, a kid, coughed on it and I really had to make a lid uh, like like okay I don't want your slobber on my paints and thanks goodness I have most of the times the lid on lids on my paints so I didn't have to worry about that but I can just get over these um, surfaces but when you want to um, sanitize uh, alcohol the alcohol actually has to be on a surface at least 30 seconds better even 50 seconds to kill the bacteria on, and viruses and fungus and whatnot so when you spray a little and, and move on and give it just a little spray and you use a very like 91% uh, alcohol, it evaporates too fast and it gives not enough time to kill. So 70% or 60% would work as actually better in that manner. And if you want to clean your brushes, you can use alcohol. You can actually dump them in, hold them a little bit in there and let them dry as well. So that works too. Um, so just to I warn you about time, we got about 10 minutes left. Okay, um, then you know what, uh, I'm gonna uh, just quick over the sponges real quick. Um, yeah, clean them that way in, with hand wash and soap and um, um, yeah, let them dry. What other, if you want to really sanitize them, uh, I, I throw them in a microwave and I do like four or five sponges um, for one minute. Make sure that you don't overdo. You don't want to. You don't want to deep fry the sponges. You want to just sanitize. And this one minute. And this is actually from a lab in Germany. They tested that. Um, this is the best way. You don't get it clean in a washer. The washer, as a matter of fact, is actually rather dangerous. Uh, when you when you go in a hotel and you pick up fungus spurs, and every hotel carpet has that. Mark my word for that. And you pick that up and you have that in your laundry room and then you put the sponges in. I don't know. I, I don't like that. So I rather use that um, other choice, wash it with hands and then heat it up or wash it with antibacterial soap, hand wash. That makes the sponges last a long, longer time as well. And yes, I want to mention this real quick. Mm -hmm. um, these sponges and you have them in your store available soon, right? This oh, one? yeah. Yeah, we're going to be selling okay. those on, on Bianca's sponges on facepaint.com. Um, these are, the thing is, um, I had the idea, but well, this is COVID, okay? I want to use one sponge per person and not, and not, not one per color. And uh, so what, what can I do to make it affordable to everyone? And I was researching, found um, foam, high density foam, and it's really good high density foam. And uh, I cut them in triangles. And this is really much cheaper. And uh, so this is like 25 sponges and they are for 11 .99. And um, it's really much cheaper. And they're good, they're good, a big size. Let me see if I have a face available real quick. Okay, Here. let me take that face. So yeah, I, if you have that face, so see that's like a bigger size uh, sponge and I have like smaller size. So they're different um, sizes um, in that bag. 
and uh, you can use like here is this way for a spider-man eye then here for a butterfly very easily you can bend them the way you need it very well and they are really firm and uh, work very well you can even pick up powders with them pretty good and um, use them as a base so these sponges are really good the white this is a little bit of a backdrop because they once you use them they will not get white again but this is the other sponges that are not black a couple a couple questions uh came in about the alcohol um, okay one was um do you add can you add water to the 90 percent alcohol to increase the dry time um yes you can add water to the 90 percent and um you just have to pay attention how much you add because it's like um the best thing is you weight it, yeah, like use the weight of it. And then it's the question, do you want 70 volume percent or do you want 70 weight percent? This is a difference because alcohol has a different, um, oh God, my God, you, I don't even know the word for that. It doesn't matter. You can water it down a little bit. Let it put this okay. way, custom, but do it because you don't want to go under 50%. Under 50, I think it's not strong enough anymore. So the best strength is when you are at 60, 70%, then mm -hmm. you have actually a very good, a drying time and um and lucy okay. asked a, a following follow-up question which is she said does the alcohol destroy the brushes um and do you use it on a regular basis because of covid and all that stuff right um i then i have the feeling i want to sanitize a brush because i don't know you, sometimes you paint a child and you realize oh there is you didn't notice it right away and then you notice oh my god there was a little slobber or a pimple or whatever and you want to make sure that it's clean then uh yeah there's nothing wrong with putting it in and letting it dry the alcohol is it, it, i i if you don't let it soak in like crazy no it i, I doubt it it won't destroy if you want to be sure just start, push it in wait 30 seconds and then rinse it back in water to clean it out and dilute it with that again mm -hmm. if you are afraid that the alcohol might um, attack the swirls you can do that just uh, work wait 30 seconds or 50 seconds and then go back in water so this would be an option. Thank you for the question. It was a good question. All right. Um, since we're running out of time, I am. Um, I have tons of tips left. Trust me. So what you can do, I'm. I'm I can post um, stuff in the comments, or you join uh, that class, uh, that that Facebook group, tips and inf information, tips and tricks for face painters. Yeah. Um, I I have actually a lot posted there of these tips, so you can read a lot there. Uh, I had a new thing, a few new things today, so that was what I was talking about today. But other than that, you can post it a lot. So oh, no, we, we can do it. We can do another one of these. Don't you worry. Right. So uh, what I promised, I want to show you a tutorial about uh, these plain white roses. Let me see if I have a picture of that. Hmm. No, I don't. It doesn't matter. I show it to you. I posted one earlier. It's this just plain white roses. They are beautiful and wonderful to do. So the thing is, I did them uh, at the beginning of last year for the ITP challenge. The challenge was like, just use white. Okay. So um, I did that and I was, oh, what am I going to paint? And I, you know what, let's try just a white rose without any other colors. And I did it and it worked out great. It was like pretty, uh, I was amazed about all the likes and oh, how do you do it? It was great. So what I did at that time, I used a regular brush, outlined it and blend in the paint. So there are other smart face painters. So this is love about it. I love this about our community. community. We share it ideas, work on ideas, improve them. So another face painter, and it was a lady, which her name I don't recall right now. It's a very complicated name. But Simona, if you're watching Simona Rad, you can, um, because Simona Rad recently posted these uh, roses and um, she, she can tag her. Ramona, Simona uh, picked it up yep. again and painted it as well. And there were a lot of questions about how do you do it? So I promise to do this little tutorial. It will not take long and we will be done in time, Blake. So what, okay. I'm, doing, what I'm doing, switch to the other camera uh, real quick, please. Sure. Okay. So I take my white and activate it, all right? So it's, it has to be activated very well. And I, I, want, I want to use a lot of the white uh, pre-activated, if that makes any sense. So then the brush itself, what I do, 
let me get that rinse well here real quick. So I dump it all the way in because I want, you have to have it wet if you want it to carry paint oh, what out. What brush are you using? This is a blazing brush, a 5.8 right mm -hmm. now. Also, I like American Painter. So these are my favorite brushes for roses. So um, I put it all the way in, give it a firm press, and this gets, gets the excess water off, okay? So I also, to uh, manage my water, I have a paper towel here, just in case. So what I do then, I just uh, put that white on, or but you can also, if you're, you know, it, it takes a little practice, so I tell you that. So you can just put that in, or a pick, like pick that up here, or you go and, and stripe it up here, all right? So what I do next, I need some sort of, um, let me, let me find a spot. Now I was talking too much. I was um, overdoing it. I'm giving it a little spray to re-moist it. Hopefully that's enough. And then it blends itself out. Let me see if it's moist enough. And then you start painting your roses, right? Can you see it well? Yeah. And this is wonderful for bridal makeup or something, right? Uh -huh. and it looks very delicate and elegant. And you can paint literally like you usually paint your roses. And um, like, you know, just, <laughs> just work with it. Mm -hmm. See that? It's great. This is exactly how I do my roses otherwise as well. I just use that. Um, uh, what's what's talking. the angled brush holder that you have to your right? This? Yeah. This is actually a real brush holder. It comes from the nail art. Um, let me reload my brush while I explain that. It comes, uh, when you go on eBay and punch in nail art brush holder, you mm -hmm. will sooner or later see this. And it's wonderful. I love this because, uh, yeah, I lay down my brushes as soon as I'm done and lay them down. And here I have several next to each other. And uh, let me try, it's not too harsh. And um, you can uh, put the brushes like that you use, like black and white, what you lose, use on huh? regular. That's, that's really, pieces. that's really clever. I like that. And um, use that. So I have. Okay. Well. And, uh, this is, uh, I know we could go on for hours, but sadly, I've got alcohol to drink. Um, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> so, on the, see that the is super easy. <laughs> and you can really make a beautiful design. I'm going to finish it and post the finished design uh, in the comments. But you see, it's actually fairly fast how it goes. And uh, it, it's beautiful. It looks so delicate on the, on the skin. And if you use um, a fixing spray to fix it, you can really offer it for bridal makeup. By the way, real quick, I tried it with uh, waterproof paints and I found it much more difficult. It's possible to do it, but more difficult. So that was me. I'll be point seven. Okay. So thank you, everybody, for coming on. I know I didn't get to all the questions, but I appreciate it. Um, for the shortness of time and um thank you everybody for coming so we're going to have another webinar next monday uh we're going to have a couple uh we got a pretty exciting lineup coming up um so uh we have uh uh darcy mchenry is going to do speed painting part two next monday and then the week after that lingo who's been on this webinar is going to do princess crowns and tiaras on may 11th and uh, we have the schedule up on facepaint.com under learning about face paint. And there's a, there's a webinar section there. So if you want to see what, what the upcoming schedule is. Um, thank you very much, Bianca. This was awesome. We are going to have you back for sure to do more roses, more tips. Um, it, it was, it was, it, now we've figured it out and you're no longer flooded. I think this is, we're going to have to do more of this. So, um, <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and uh, have a good evening. And stay safe out there. Thank you, too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.